Hello dragons, welcome back to today's video. It's been a while since the last time I uploaded. The last video I uploaded on my channel was the trailer for their next episode of the Red Eye Chronicles. Even though it was just a trailer, I am very proud of it. But enough of the trailer for my Red Eye series, let's focus on the new project I'm working on. This time around, I found this strange looking My Little Pony ripoff that I found at Meijer, which was only $5, or $4, I don't remember. These are really weird. They look like My Little Pony if they were made with cheap supplies. Enough of that. I do like how the hair, oh sorry, the mane look on this horse. One thing I don't like about this copycat of a My Little Pony are these heart shaped hooves that these pony have. I have another one to show you guys. See, this is the second one that have it. I have a plan to sand these down, but before I get to that, let's cut off this horse's mane. She won't be needing that anymore. Shh, don't cry. Your hair will be donated to my doll hair box that I can use for other projects. Except for the bangs. I can't use those for anything. Just grabbing the hair tie th that it came with. I can use it to tie the hair together and cut it all right off. But once all of that beautiful hair come off, I just went ahead and trimmed down the pieces of the hair that I couldn't really get off in my first swing. And this took a while to do. You know what this reminded me of? Those itchy sweaters your grandparents used to get to you all those years ago. I hate those sweaters. After trimming and brushing off the hair on his doll, I grab a cup full of hot water and dunk the doll into the cup. This isn't strange at all. After leaving the doll in the cup for a while, I was able to pull the head right off of this horse. After spilling some of the wa my water onto my desk. You saw that I accidentally spilled some water. I didn't mean to spill some water. That was an accident. But also look at this dude. Look at this dude. Oh my god, this is... This is terrifying. <laughs> this is so weird. Here's the pad. <laughs> oh my god. I'm gonna leave you here, actually. I'm gonna leave you here. Right here. There he is. After that little shenanigan, I went ahead and pulled the hair plugs right off of this horse. And this time, it was really easy to pull the hair out. I like pulling hair out of Monster High dolls or any other type of dolls, like Barbie, for example. It was really easy to pull all the hair plugs. Maybe that's because there wasn't a whole lot of hair plugs for me to pull. But I really enjoyed pulling the hair plugs this time around. Usually I hate pulling out hair plugs. And just like pulling hair plugs out of a Monster High doll, it's time for me to grab out the acetone and some ear swab and start cleaning the doll's face. Now I could have used like maybe some a bigger cotton to clean this horse's character's face off. And it would have been a lot easier. But I was lazy and I didn't want to dig through my supplies to find it, so yeah. You gotta watch me struggle. And me cleaning up the horns. I wanna keep it, but I don't know if I can. Then I went ahead and grabbed non acetone of uh, acetone and started cleaning off the body of the horse. And I soon quickly realized that this is going to take for day forever. And I didn't want to sit here scrubbing for an eternity. I decided just to go straight to the Dremel tool. What the heck? My camera just glitched out on me. I need to investigate that. But uh, right now, I need to work on this doll. I'll investigate that later. I use my Dremel tool to sand down those stupid food design. Then off camera, I use a sharpie to mark out the spot I wanted to add detail with the Dremel tool. This took t some time because, well, I didn't want to open the toy like well, that, but it wasn't going how I wanted it, so I just went with it. After realizing the inevitable, I just went back to the neck and cut out the rest of the neck. I will fill it in with hot glue later. After finishing the rest of the body, I move on to the head and carve the lip. I had to do the lip more than I would have count because, well, it just wasn't going through in the direction I wanted to. Oh well, you can't even notice it. Oh yeah, I forgot about the horn. I tried to like sand it down the best I could because I wanted to keep the horn and just like sand down these ridges, um, well, it didn't turn out the way I wanted to. So I just ended up ripping the horn off because, well, it was just gonna get in my way and I'm just gonna put a wire in it. But the horn is completely gone. But do you wanna know what is not gone? My social media site, like my Instagram and Tumblr account. I post daily on both of those accounts, at least I try to post daily. And I have a store open right now, link down in the description below or right here on my channel banner. 
Or you can just type it in the web searcher. Just type in www.dragonsnip.myshopify.com. Not only do, you ha do I have a store where I can sell art prints, paintings, sculpture, custom, and even stickers, and possibly keychains in the future, but I am also open for commissions as well. If you guys want to commission me, but you guys can go to artistry.io.dragonsnips to commission me for drawings uh, like creature characters or fan art. Hey, you can commission me for painting, but right now I'm kind of close for painting because I'm currently working on a painting. Just like the store, you guys can check my channel banner. You can go down in the description below, or you oh, you write it like on like the web searcher. Thank you guys so much for all the support. Now back to the video. into this uh, doll. So let's do that, shall we? I use a lot of hot glue in the area that needed, and I used paper to fill in the hole because I was too lazy to grab my tin foil for certain areas. Screws in for, on the forehead and a few other places, like the shoulders, the back, the tail. And then after, like, I glued everything in, including adding glues to some of the areas of, like, that needed to be filled because they have uh, holes and stuff. I even uh, uh, fill in the holes on the, like, the horse's rib cage, but I eventually took them out because um, I found out I didn't need them, actually. After waiting for the hot glue to dry and make sure everything was in order, it was time for the sculpting part. First, off camera, I added the aluminum foil onto areas that needed them. However, later I do remove some of them because I realized it was just getting in the way. Now that everything is ready, it's now time for me to grab out the epoxy sculpt and get to work. You're probably going to notice that my epoxy sculpt is a different color this time. But, well, I ran out of the epoxy and, um, yeah, I got this. By accident. I didn't want this. And I accidentally got this one, but I'll still use it because of the epoxy and it's still pretty good. The first part of the sculpture is to block out the shape of the figure and to make sure that the tail stays in the spot I wanted it to stay. And I did start sculpting in some areas, but I mainly just wanted to kind of add in some deep, like, fill in some areas and stuff. Once the first batch of the epoxy dried and they sanded it down, I went back with another layer of epoxy to start sculpting her just a little bit more. But I even added some clay to the top of the head to try to cover up those holes because I ain't rerouting her hair. Once all of the first batch was done, I sanded it down and then I went back with another layer of epoxy sculpt to kind of add in more details, like adding more spikes to her back, I just didn't want just the two on her back. I added some more details around her face, her uh, body. Added in, like, um, try to break away the, the section of, like, her fleshy part and her body. But it, so, there was that. I even added the, uh, the little parasite onto her chest. Yes, she's part of my Red Eye universe, so of course I need to add a parasite 98 onto her chest. And then I decided to add some epoxy sculpt to her stomach and making sure that her rib kick, that um, it looked like they're sinking in. And then um, I did the rest of the uh, sculpting off camera because I was on a time crunch on this project. So now it's time for me to get ready to start painting her. I did want to uh, spray paint her outside, but it was raining outside at the time of the recording, so I decided to just grab out some white gesso and paint her on my desk.
Okay, seriously, my camera's acting up again. Now I need to investigate this. Does he seem to be wrong with my camera? It's probably just the battery, so give me a second. Okay, now that I can change the battery on my camera, that should hopefully fix my camera and the glitching should stop. Anyway, let's get back to the zombie horse. So this part of the video took me like a million layers with right just so, just to get a pretty good coverage on her because, um, well, she, it took me forever, but also I wanted her to be a white horse. Gonna, like one of those silver horses that you see in the movie. After spraying her down with like three layers of Mrs. Super Clear, it was time for the blushy. Now I didn't want black and white each for this character because, well, she's supposed to be dead. So I added some blue to her character. I got this idea from Silver Griffin when she was customizing her, her horse doll. Similar to me, but I have a zombie and she did a regular horse. Once the blue ended, I added the peachy color around her eyes. And um, I also added some greens around her body too, and gluing like pinks to some of the um, vein and browns. And then I went back to her eye again and added like pinks and red to her eye to kind of get ready for the eye work. But, and then I added a, like a layer of a matte varnish onto her face, which helped me with the layering of the pastel. And I'm still testing this method out, and I would like to test this out with darker uh, dolls, but today is not that day. One day I will. After I was finished with the pastel onto her eyes, it was time for me to go with color pencils. It was time for me to go with the color pencil and add in the details. Now, some of my color pencil work on her face, and some of them were having a hard time with the face up. Like the white color pencil, I, I, I see like Cat Melian use white color pencil onto the character face with no problem. But whenever I do it, white just don't show up. And it, and it just start uh, like scratching off the face. It doesn't matter what color watercolor pencil I'm using, either like a good brand or not a good brand. This I, I've just been having struggle with a white watercolor pencil. I don't know why. It doesn't want to show up or just put on the face. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. But let's just move on. If I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing wrong, let's just move on to the rest of the character. This time, I'm working on the spikes, teeth, horns on her, and I'm going to be painting them a bone white color. I don't wonder why uh, a zombie horse need all these horns and spikes and stuff. I don't know. Maybe I just wanted to give my horse spiky stuff. For the face up, I, before I um, wrap her face up, I just added the bone white color to her teeth and horns. And then I went ahead and added white wash onto both of the teeth and the horns. And when all of that was done, I sprayed it down one last time with Mrs. Super Clear and added the protective shield to her face. I didn't want to destroy the hard work I put into her face. After spraying her body down with two layers of Mrs. Super Clear and one layer of matte varnish, I went ahead and started blushing her body just like I did with her face. I added a blue, green, peach, and even some pink and brown to her body. I didn't want her body to be a bright white anymore because, well, she's dead. She's a zombie now. I even added several layers of red pastel onto her stomach and tail because this is all the fleshy part, I guess. I don't know what you want to call this. After I finished her tail and stomach, I moved to painting her spikes the bone white color that I used for her teeth and horns. And just like teeth and horn, I just added the wash, but we're just going to skip this part, and now time to move on to the other part. But I made up some water, uh, like a watered down paint, red and orange, to paint this part. But I added the orange to the corner of the, um, to, to the, the part, and then added red and um, darker red to the area as well. Uh, it took a, I wanted to add uh, like a light pink to this area. I had to wait a while before I could do so. So once this area was done drying, I added a lighter pink to this area. Not too much, I did dry brush just a little bit to these areas. My sister told me that this part looked really gross to her, which is good because I was able to make something look gross. I had to wait a million years uh, for all of it to dry, and, and as I was waiting for them to dry, I added a wet wash to the parasite legs that was going through the horse's body and painted the outer shell of the parasite blue because the shell is blue because I said so. Once all the paint was dry, I added some gloss to the area that needed to be glossed, like her eyes, bone, fleshy parts, and then I was gonna call it done. Then I remember that I needed to add one important thing to her, her mane. So I created some hair wrap off camera with acrylic yarn and started gluing them onto her head. I was struggling with the gluing part for her hair because, well, nothing wanted to work with me. And it was easy to glue down on the Monster High doll, just not on this doll because, oh boy, she was giving me trouble. And because I was on a time crunch, 
I couldn't allow it to dry completely, so the hairstyle that I wanted to do couldn't work because not everything was dried. So I literally had to kind of rush this part, but it turned out in the end to be fantastic. Despite my struggle with her mane, she is finally done. Despite having trouble with her mane, I am in love with this sculpture. She turned out the exactly what I wanted to. Well, besides the hair, the struggle, the hair is fine. I'm not saying it's bad. It's just like, not exactly how I wanted it to be, but that's the only negative part about the sculpture. Everything else looks fantastic. The teeth, spike, blood, creepy looking monster who's ready to hunt down more people to spread the parasite around to both human and animals. I don't know if I could ever sell her on my store. I don't think I am, because how much I love her. Anyway, that should be it, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you dragons next time. Bye! 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 First came.